and joy to announce uh, the Grammy nominated singer and um, new member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Please put your hands together one more time for the one and only Mr. Peter Cetera. Peter, I don't know where to start. Um, okay. I don't know where to start. First of all, I want to thank you also on behalf of the whole audience, of the Swiss audience, for this amazing, amazing, high energetic show with your songs. They sound better than ever. You got a fantastic band. Thank you. Well, needless to say, it, uh, it makes everything better when the crowd is so good. You guys were awesome, the crowd. And, uh, yeah, the band is, you know, I tell people when you, when you come to hear the show, I feel sorry for people that either didn't know about the show or didn't care or didn't come because they, they miss, it's a great band and that's what makes it fun, you know? So it, it, is no, it is no joke, but this is actually your first time in Europe and first time in Switzerland. I'm in having Lucerne. a hard time getting upset oh. here. Let's see yeah, here. Now let's go. <laughs> <laughs> first time in Switzerland, first time in Lucerne. How do you like Lucerne so far? I love it. Everybody's been so nice and... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. We, there's a big difference when you tour in the States and you, and you go to Toledo or, or whatever and then you come to Lucerne, it's just beautiful. Now you, you have just been to, to Sweden, to, to Stockholm and did a show there, that's how it looked. Ah, and you, you played yes. in an amazing location called the Circus, so how was the show in the Circus? Yeah, it was amazing. The, uh, the Circus actually uh, is right across, so this is something nobody knows, right across from the Circus, that's, that's it, what a wonderful place. Uh, there's a ship called the Vasa. That's if you ever go to Stockholm, you must go see the Vasa. It's a it's a it's a fabulous uh, relic from the 1400s. So now that you experience two shows in Europe, uh, is the European crowd any different than the crowd uh, around the globe and the rest of the other countries that you play? Well, I mean, I think everywhere you go, I you always wonder if everybody is going to know your songs or remember you or or you know and especially coming here because i haven't been here uh but in the end i think uh the people show that they love the songs and that's what makes the crowd so good and, mm -hmm. and that's what makes us on stage feel good too so you're a brand new member of the rock and roll hall of fame what does this prize What, the, what does this prize personally mean to you to receive that uh, honor? Well, you know, it's kind of a mixed thing. I mean, I've, I've, I felt that Chicago, we should have been in years ago. Um, and, well, I, so there was kind of a, a little personal vendetta going on that kept us out. Uh, and so it was a little bittersweet being inducted now but yeah we are in and um uh i just chose not to go it's you know it's uh i haven't been with the group in all these years and it's you know it, it, people ask me well are you going to get back and do, do this you know and it's sort of like asking somebody to get back together with your ex for the night and film it you know so, and, and i thought it was better perhaps not to go so what I want to know, where, where is this prize going to stand at Peter Cetera's home? Where do you put it? This prize, well, this award? Well, strangely enough, they, when they mail it to me, I had more fun taking it around. I, I live in a small town in Idaho, uh, Sun Valley, Idaho, and I, I had more fun taking that thing around. I had it on the, on the floor of my car, and I'd see somebody, you know, friends of mine, and I'd stop and go, hey, come here. 
You ever seen one of these before? <laughs> and in the process of a couple of days after I got it, I, I scratched, the statue's got a scratch in it, and the base is kind of cracked. So they're going to fix it, but... Um, <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Now, you mentioned a very big inspiration for myself as well, but also for you, a guy that you work with uh, many, many years, still work with him, and that's David Foster. And um, I, I heard the story that uh, the song, You're the Inspiration, um, you were inspired to write the lyrics for You're the Inspiration in Italy. What's well, the like story I, behind this song? Well, like I say, uh, David at the time was recording Kenny Rogers, who was a big star. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, He called me up and asked me if I wanted to write a song for Kenny Rogers. So I started the song and then left for Italy. And uh, actually, when I was in Rome, and um, the the original words were something like, uh, "You should uh, you should know like Michelangelo." I mean, there were things like that. Mm -hmm. Very, I was very inspired and uh, ended up changing some of the words, and there you go. All right, all right. Um, now, I'm going to talk about, of course, all the amazing artists that share, uh, from time to time, the same stage with you. Um, some of them, we see them here. The best of the best, the uh, most, most recognized artists of all kinds, including uh, the late Natalie Cole, of course. Um, so, what I want to know, how is it for you personally to be on stage, to do this amazing show with David Foster and friends all over the world in Asia? Um, how is it to be on stage, like when you, when you stand in the line, and, and just the greatest yeah. singers of all time standing with you. That, that show right there was the first one we ever did. That was at Mandalay Bay, I think. Mm -hmm. I think is, uh, and I'm going back uh, with David. I'm going back to uh, at the end of September for a week in Florence with, mm -hmm. with uh, Andrea Bocelli and doing some shows there too. You know, it's you don't have a chance to meet a lot of people in the business because you're going this way and they're going that way, you know. Actually, David Foster played a very big part because back in Chicago, you know, I mean, Chicago was together a long time and we had, you know, ups and downs, you know, and that's the way the business goes. And he was responsible when uh, Warner Brothers suggested we use him. And for some reason, David and I clicked right, right immediately and wrote the whole batch of songs, you know, Stay the Night, You're the Inspiration, Hard to Say I'm Sorry, Glory of Love. And, and it sort of put Chicago back on top. And then later, you know, I, when I went solo, you know, I had a, uh, some success early on and then I didn't, I, I didn't really have a record company behind me or manager. And uh, I sort of got discouraged, and I sort of, I wasn't working for a while. And uh, David actually called me up and said, hey, would you like to sing? I'm doing this thing with the symphony and stuff. And that's how I started again, uh, on that show right there. And uh, even to this day, I still do uh, a symphony show. I take my band, we take, and uh, we do it unplugged with symphony charts it's an amazing show so maybe the next time we'll bring the symphony show to switzerland fantastic that would be fantastic um, um yeah i grew up that's not the house i don't know what house know, that is but, yeah. but but uh, uh, yeah the south side of chicago so, so i noticed when you were a small guy your hair still looked uh, looks the same like it does today <laughs> um so uh, i thought it was very cute <laughs> It's very cute. I was right? pretty cute, yeah. wasn't I? Yeah. yeah. You still are a very good looking guy. And then later on, uh, now, you know. But I thought, you know, it's not fair that I show pictures of you in that age, you know. At least I have to show some of mine. That's me. <laughs> That's little Phil. The same age, we would have been best buddies. Peter and Phil. <laughs> now you come from a very musical very, family. Very cute, very cute. Very cute, yeah. <laughs> I have some ideas for some songs, Peter and Phil. There you go. Great. Uh, you come from a very musical family. You have two brothers. They're also very gifted musicians. Um, that is uh, Kenny, Tim, and of course yourself. Um, well, my, my brother Tim in the middle actually years ago played with uh, Ricky Nelson's band. That's right. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. And uh, 
my brother Kenny now still works. Uh, he actually plays. I, I sort of talked him into doing a, a Chicago tribute band, which he does. He goes on the road with that. And uh, he also does, a, he also plays in an Eagle tribute band. So he's, yeah. And then he sings with me sometimes too. Kenny actually toured with Chicago. I brought him on the road. He was on the road during Chicago 17 for about a year, year and a half. And he actually sang backgrounds with me on You're the Inspiration and Hard to Say I'm Sorry. So. Why did you, why did you uh, choose the bass guitar? Because um, it had four strings. And I thought, hmm, might be easier with four strings. I don't... What time did you start to play the bass first well, time? Well, I, I actually, I, I wanted to buy a guitar when I was younger, but my parents, my parents wouldn't let me, so I had to play an accordion. You're looking at the last Polish accordion player from the south side of Chicago. And then when I went to high school, uh, I met this fellow who was a guitar player, and um, he, uh, he said, let's start a band. So I went and I bought a cheap bass, and that bass right there was probably the worst piece of garbage I ever played. <laughs> <laughs> it looked great, but that's the only time I ever touched it. It was horrible. Before the glory years, uh, of course, with Chicago and, and the Peter Cetera years, you were in this band called The Exceptions. We were the best. We were the best there was in, in Chicago and in the Midwest. We were uh, sort of a, we were sound alike. You know, you had to play, you had to play top 40 songs to work, and we were the best. Um, you're a big Beatles fan, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. There's a story um, I heard that when you met Paul McCartney, and uh, you were so nervous that you forgot who your your own name. Is yeah, this correct? Yeah, I did. I did. I forgot. I forgot my name, but he didn't. It was it. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> actually, there you, yeah. yeah. There you go. That's, yeah. that, that's actually a picture I took at, at the Beatles show. I, I saw the Beatles twice, live, and uh, I mean, I still get chills when I think about it. And this was the second, this was the third tour in Chicago, uh, and we, I paid scalper tickets, and I think the scalper tickets were like, Fifty dollars, and you could see they were really good seats. And uh, the Beatles came on, and I think I'm not sure they started with "She's a Woman" or something. And up until then, the PA was just beautiful. Every group that was on sounded great. The Beatles came on, you know, hello, how are you? And then boom, they went into "She's a Woman," and the PA blew up. Right. My love don't give me present. My love don't give Bam, the PA blew up. So for the rest of the show, you could barely hear them. Even when they talked, you could hear the music. But I didn't care, because I was that close to the Beatles. <laughs> For all uh, those uh, music lovers, if you've never heard how the exceptions sounded, you're a funny, funny group. And we have some footage from the very, very early days, and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy that with us. Where in the hell did you find that picture? <laughs> It's an original record of the exceptions. be a comeback show with the exceptions <laughs> ah there we are with our suits yeah 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 well i I've, i've actually i i've i've seen everybody just within the past couple of years it's, it's very funny we were a fantastic group actually we were very very good group well yeah. maybe you should think about the reunion <laughs> yeah i don't think i'm gonna so. bring you guys over here to hot as right so again with the exceptions <laughs> You know, there was a period when we were very, very hot and played... I think we were the first people to play 
Madison Square Garden five nights in a row, and uh, and we played the Forum many nights in a row. So there was, you know, there was exciting times with it. Yeah, sure. Do you regret that you couldn't go on stage in Madison Square Garden and took a selfie? <laughs> took a <laughs> selfie. Well, now that I see all the pictures you found, I don't think I needed a selfie. My lord. You know why I showed this picture? Your green suit. There's a nice story. Your green suit was stolen once, right? And years yes. later, yeah, well, years later, you find your green yeah. suit somewhere in yes. a shop. Well, what's the story behind that? The fellow that made that suit is Manuel, Manuel the tailor. He's a very famous tailor. And he used to work for somebody called Nudie, who is even more famous. And Nudie became famous. He made Elvis Presley's Golda May suit. And then he proceeded to make all the rhinestone suits for all the, what, the country singers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Manuel was his tailor. So years ago, Manuel made that suit for me, a bunch of other suits. And uh, subsequently, he moved to Nashville, where he's now the biggest... You know, he still makes the suits for the country stars. And so, years ago, I had a bunch of things stolen out of a wardrobe case. And uh, I actually forgot what was stolen. And I would say, six months ago, I went into his store to get something to go on the road. And he says to me, he said, Peter, I have something for you. Look. And I turned, and there's that suit. And I went, what in the heck? And sure enough, and I said, where did you get this? And he bought it on eBay. <laughs> so my question is now, did you buy it back? Or well, is it still in the shop? <sighs> it's in his shop, uh, and I, I said, all right, look, as long as you can put up a sign that says, on loan from Peter Cetera, because I couldn't ask for it back. But I'd like to know who he got it from. And, mm. But uh, yeah, it's very funny. I still have that, that Fender bass, I still have it. And that bass, when I first bought it, it was a sunburst. And then I had, had a friend of mine paint it, who was an artist, painted it psychedelic, we painted it white with flowers. That was the hippie days. Mm -hmm. And then I, I uh, stripped it down to bare wood, varnished it, and then had it painted white, and I still have it, it's still painted white, and that's the, still have that base. Yeah, you know, I love it, you know? So Peter, before you leave, uh, sure. since you're here, um, I uh -oh. want to pay a tribute to, um, to you okay. tonight. Okay. And um, it's a great honor to play this song on my okay. own version. Okay. Everybody needs a little time away I heard the say From each other Even lovers need a holiday Far away from the one that I love Hold me now It's hard for me to say I'm sorry I just want you to stay After all that we've been through I will make it up to you I promise to It's been said and done you just a part of me I can't let go oh. After all that you went through 
I will make it up to you I promise you After all that's been said and done Said and done You're just a part of me yeah. You're just a part of me Peter, you are a part of me You're just a part of me I can't let go Thank you so much for coming tonight, Peter. Peter is a terror. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Peter is a terror, y'all. Best of you, my little town.